Hey everybody, Eric here for Procurement Con, and I'm here to give you 10 tips or things that should be in your bid responses when you're responding to an RFP, or might even be in your presentation for a client or your marketing proposal or presentation. So stick around, we'll be right back. Here comes the Real simple, let's get started. Uh, 10 things that should be in your proposals or your presentations uh, or your bid responses. Everybody else has a lot of different tips that they give you uh, and they're all sound and there's some basic rules to to responding to uh, bids um, and every bid is a little bit different. There's usually a format requirement and if there's not one, then you'll do your best. But this is not about formatting. This is about information. This is about you doing what you need to do to improve the attention and potential success of you being awarded a contract. Tip number one, create curiosity. I know that sounds a little weird um, when you're responding to a government contract or a state contract. Um, we do it when we're trying to sell a potential client, commercial client. We create that curiosity about ourselves. We're a little bit ambiguous in our uh, initial presentations about the things that we've done. So you want to sort of do that same thing when you are responding to your bid. You want to put in your executive summary something that's going to spark curiosity and have them looking for more details throughout your bid response, usually in your experience narratives. It should be unique to a certain extent. I mean, that we all the world is really smaller than we think. We are all doing a lot of the same things. And you definitely want someone to read it and go, I need to know more. So test that out when you are writing your bid response uh, on your friends, associates, and uh, employees or business partners and see what their response is like. And that'll give you a sense of how creating curiosity might work. Tip two, be authoritative, be a subject matter expert, be the expert. So when you're writing your bid proposal, don't write about things you don't know. You may have someone on your team that knows it far better than you. Let them write that portion of the business proposal. So be authoritative in your experience, but it doesn't end there. Be authoritative, period. Do not write bid responses or presentations that are future tense. Write them present tense. Write them in the now. Do not use words. Let's talk about the do nots. Those are easy. Do not use words like, we will do X. Don't talk in those ways. Don't talk in that fashion. What you want to say is something more to the extent of, we are X. So we are creating outreach strategies, or we create outreach strategies, or whatever it is you're, you're bidding on. Use the now, the authoritative voice, you have to be writing your bid response as if you already got the job. Tip number three, you want to create value, uh, scarcity, urgency, or fear of missing out. When writing a bid response, creating a uh, fear of missing out is a little bit difficult unless you're a really, really special niche service provider. Um, so you don't want to really try to go down that road and beat your head against that wall. How do you create that? emotional response. Focus more on the RFP response, the bid response in the value uh, and the urgency. Value mostly, you want to say, I'm getting, uh, you're getting more bang for your buck. This is your ROI with us. These are the benefits to being with us. Uh, and trying to hit things that you feel and believe are really unique to you. And that comes in the research too, is if you're able to see who the other plan holders are, who the other potential bidders are, you can look at what they do. And then you could see where you do it better or you offer something they don't that can be construed as value add. Uh, so trying to create FOMO is a little bit tough in a bid response unless you're a really, really unique niche service provider. So run with the value. Now, if it's in a presentation to the commercial market, you can go run with the urgency, the scarcity, and the FOMO quite easily. Number four, consistency and commitment. Consistency is completing the jobs that you were hired to do, whether in the commercial space or in the contracting, the, the, the federal, state, or local government contracting space. Every one of your references should be able to say, yes, completed. If you have work history in SAM, 
system of awards ma system of awards management, then that reporting should be consistent completion, on time, on budget, no headaches. We all know you're committed. How you convey that is really almost generally the whole uh, RFP bid response is you showing your commitment to your craft and your trade, but make sure that your references are able to also say, you know, these guys did a great job. They stayed the course. Uh, they did the work. Uh, they were on point. They, their communication was excellent. Make sure that you have worked those references in uh, that will speak the highest of you. Five, research and relatability. How does research and relatability work? Simple. Do your research on your offerer. Know who they are. Know the task that they're asking. Research it. If you're bidding on a project that isn't in a region you know very well, you're going to have to do more research to respond to that RFP uh, and understanding the market. Do not take a blanket approach. Just because behavior, for example, in marketing, behaviors of consumers are generally consistently the same, it doesn't mean that a regional uh, area is going to be identical. There are nuances to all that. So understand that you have to research the project you're being asked to bid on, research the offerer, and then if you can see who the plan holders are, research your competition. Those it's really important. So research that because once you research it and you understand it, you'll be able to write relatable responses in your methodology, in your narrative, in your approach, uh, in, your, in your plan. And out of all the tips, research is probably the most important one. Tip six, don't pocket that ego, you need it. Compare yourself to everybody else. Not necessarily by name your competition and not throwing out negative things about anyone else. When we say, or when I say compare, find your heroes. Find people in your industry that are leveled up to the places you want to be. Compare you to them and name drop it. We work under the same guidelines as whomever. So in our case, I would say uh, we believe in X, you know, pushing the boundaries of creative strategies and marketing the same way Wolf Allens does. Um, and so we would reference that because we want people don't know us and know us well when we're, we're you know, responding to a bid. Nobody does. But if you have someone you look up to that has a bigger footprint and easier access and maybe more visibility and you are working to their standards and their quality, it's okay to compare yourself to them and say a positive thing about yourself and them. Don't disparage anybody. Leave the gossip at the table for social media. Stay away from that. Don't take apart anyone. Tip seven, experience, evidence, and social proof. What does that all mean? Well, social proof proves that in the wild, your product, your service, et cetera, is in the wild and it's working. Whatever it is, it could be marketing, it could be construction, it can be public art, it can be medical care, it can be anything, it can be packaging MREs. It's in the wild, it's proven. That's a given. So that's your social proof and your evidence. Experience. When you're writing this bid response, it's really important to put experiences that your experience and your references that are relatable to that bid response, to that bid opportunity. So make sure that if you did a, a job where you're a full contracting company and you do everything from the foundation to the finishes, um, but this is a framing job, don't focus your experiences on the full jobs. You can mention them, you could talk about it, soup to nuts, but focus your experiences on the framing portions of those jobs. Focus your experiences on projects where maybe you just did framing, but make sure your experiences are relatable to the project you're bidding on. Number eight, anchoring. Everybody uses this everywhere. Can't really do it in a, in a bid response, but let me show you how to get around that. First of all, what is anchoring? Anchoring is the classic on sale for $79.99, marked down from $189.99. So now they give you the anchor price, $189.99, then they give you the drop price, which is the sale price, and then they add all the extra stuff for limited time only, sale ends, create trying to create the 
scarcity, trying to create the FOMO, trying to create the urgency. You can't do that in a bid response. There's no way to say, here's my price, but for one day only, it'll be this. So what you do is you price fully. Don't sell yourself short. But you can anchor because there are opportunities throughout different RFPs where there are discounts you can give. They're asking you, say, what's the discount if? A lot of times they're in the form of prompt pay, but prompt pay clauses. Prompt pay clauses um, usually are to help speed up the payment process. A lot of agencies and, and, and government bodies have a very specific way of payment, or they might outline a very specific way of how you'll be paid once you're awarded that contract. So it's really important for you to see if there's an opportunity for prompt pay to offer a discount. So here's your big price, your main price, and then here's the discount if they're willing to change their pay or pay you quicker. So always use that opportunity. If you don't see a prompt pay opportunity, it is okay to offer one. Doesn't mean you'll get it, doesn't mean it'll cause you to win the bid, doesn't mean they can even do it, but it's okay to offer it. Okay, everybody should know tip number nine is solutions. I mean, that's why the RFP is out there. These are folks, agencies, organizations looking for a solution to a problem or to a new idea or something to that effect. So what you want to do is offer it. So in your methodologies, in your plan, don't ever give anybody the full plan and they'll start asking for it. Um, I can tell you from my own experience, I've given people the full plan and I've actually gotten people come to me after I've won the, not won the bid and say, can we use part of your plan? So I never give away the full strategy. I never give away the full plan. You can do what you want, but I do offer a solution. And this always find the problem solution. Create the problem and offer the solution. You are the expert. Create the problem. If you see that there would in, in, in this bid opportunity that XYZ is going to cause a potential problem, state it. By doing X, this is going to happen. Here's how we fix it. So absolutely, when you are writing your RFP, look for potential problems, even within your own methodologies, and address it right away. They want to see your problem solver. It may not always be the same for, let's say, some bids that are really cut and dry. Build me these army barracks. Okay? Construction, a lot of people know the problems they're going to face on new construction. You know, what's, what's up against. You may not have to dive that deep, but depending on what you're doing, definitely everything you're writing to is offering a solution. Number 10, create that unique selling proposition. That's usually the value proposition as well. When you're doing your summary of your bid, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to restate your unique selling proposition. That unique selling proposition might be, we offer proprietary app for you to use or for your customers to use uh, at no cost for 12 months. Your unique selling proposition can be, uh, we get you know, all our supplies direct from the manufacturer, we don't buy through a third party. Um, so in case, let's say, sense of construction, maybe you're importing all the lumber out of Canada. That's a unique selling proposition because that suppresses costs, um, which can be passed along. Definitely restate your unique selling proposition, stated in the beginning, stated in the middle, stated in the end. I hope those 10 tips help give you a little bit of edge when you're writing a bid response or a presentation or a potential proposal, whether it's government contract and commercial facing. I hope they give you a little bit more edge, give you a little bit more dimension and they help you out uh, and make your responses and pre presentations a little bit better. There are a few books in the description below about responding to bids and how to write uh, good bid proposals. So you want to check those out on Amazon. There's also a YouTuber out there. Kizzy Parks is her name. There's a link below to one of her videos. You're going to want to go follow her and subscribe. She's really, really informative on the um, government contracting bid space. So check her out. She's constantly putting out videos that are high value informative videos. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and uh, notifications uh, for our channel. Every time you like one of our videos, it tells us what content we need to keep making. Uh, it's not about the algorithm. It's about you. So go out there and make some shit happen. Here comes the